Mantra thought Jujutsu Kaisen, episode 21, Jujutsu Kaisen. Seriously, there was like three or four times in today's episode, I literally almost choked laughing. Today's episode was great, and it's a perfect example of how to properly mix comedy with tragedy. I mean, this series is so dark and so intense, yet it's able to pepper in those jokes at the perfect time, like literally going from a life and death struggle, fighting off these special grade curses, to playing baseball, like, <laughs> oh God. So first things first, let's talk about Gojo. Now Gojo, he is slowly becoming one of my favorite characters of all time. Not only is he a monster, but the pure elation he gets from fucking with people is next level. I mean, don't even get me started on him fucking with Gakuganji and Masamichi, turning the second stage individual fights into a game of baseball. But as they're having this super serious, super introspective conversation about Yuji. Here comes Gojo strolling along to fuck with them. Like, I honestly thought this dude stepped on the fucking ants, but the power of infinity, they were perfectly fine. But the shock on their faces was priceless. Like, to hear Kakuganji like, dude, you need to get him under control. And you just see fucking Gojo laughing like, hey. <laughs> it's hilarious. He is fucking amazing. And he is that perfect example of the difference between arrogance and confidence. Because this motherfucker motherfucker, unlike almost every sensei or senpai we've had so far, can back it up. This dude is fucking legit. Whew. Now that my love rant for Gojo is over, let's talk about today's episode. Now, as the curses go over their plan, their heist, we do get a lot of information. First and foremost, what was actually taken? It seems Jujutsu Tech was in possession of six Sakuna fingers, but not only that, they stole some other cursed objects. And unfortunately, we've heard this term before, and it's very fucking frightening. The cursed womb. This time, death paintings one through three. So now we have three more potential special grade curses. You saw what happened when the, the cursed womb, that spherical ball, you know, actually evolved, right? Right out of the box, it was fucking killing us. Literally. I mean, it took Sakuna to come out and this thing just not know any better to get completely eviscerated, right? And now we have the potential of dealing with three of these motherfuckers. <sighs> Another interesting tidbit is the dynamic of the group itself. While Ghetto seems to be one of the few humans, uh, Jujutsu Sorcerers, the curses actually work with and kind of trust. I mean, I can't really call it that because I don't know it. He's not the only humans they're working with. And then it's actually an intermediary that they go through that Juzu actually told us about as he is getting interrogated. We uh, were witness to this presumably Jujutsu source. We can't tell if it's a boy or a girl, this very ambiguous character with a, uh, a white bowl cut. Besides confirming my suspicion that everything happening within the barrier was in fact a decoy to keep Gojo preoccupied away from what Mahito was doing. The biggest piece of information we got through this higher ups, you know, meeting was the Tengen barrier. Now, this is a very interesting concept. A Jujutsu sorcerer who has a technique for immortality, not eternal youth. And at this point, he's basically, as they state it, like a tree. I mean, he's there as uh, protection and not an actual sorcerer. So you don't have to actually worry about this dude, but it's a very interesting interesting concept, the whole, you know, uh, protecting the storage room, the, the ever changing door. I think Jogo actually said what I was thinking, like, oh, who's stronger, him or, you know, Gojo? And it's almost like they said, like, oh, you can't compare the two. I mean, one's like, a, almost like a, a force upon itself and the other one's an actual, you know, <laughs> walking, talking human at this point. That does lead me to wonder, it, who is this Tengen character? How old he truly is? Does he know Sakuna? I mean, what's the past here? Is there some kind of physical body. I mean, there's a lot that can happen with that character. One thing that they did answer was, in fact, how did Mihito actually know where this ever-changing storage room was? And once again, we return to Junpei, the cursed finger that was placed with his mother that ended up killing her, and in turn, forcing Junpei down his path, was in fact embedded with some of Mihito's own cursed energy, basically using it to track down the whereabouts. Now, besides the little, uh, my friendo brother scene we get when Toto interrupts our main trio and their little their little powwow. It's basically just <laughs> it's just a game of baseball. I mean, yeah, I mean there's some really good scenes in there. The the Mechamaru pitching machine was fucking hilarious. Maki swinging for the 
fences and just so, so confident that it's going to be a home run, yet Momo catching it midair because being down a player, they're able, she's the one person able to utilize the Aguirre curse techniques and she literally catches it with her flight. Like, that was funny, but I gotta say, the best part, absolute best part, is once again, Toto and Yuji when they're having this very serious conversation and he just gets blasted in the face by a ball, all right? Not only does the anime point out that it was in fact intentional, but everyone saying good pitch and Yuji realizing that everyone there hates him is fucking hilarious. Like I said, they mix comedy so well with tragedy. It's it's awesome. <laughs> like uh, it's it's a much needed break for how intense it has been. This felt like how the season should end, but judging by next week's preview, Oh god, it looks like we're gonna get maybe uh, the beginning of another arc, like it, what, three episodes left? It doesn't have a lot of time to unfold an entire thing, but seeing how they're in possession of three cursed wombs, they were in the preview, and the title of the next episode is kind of foreboding, like the origin of blind obedience, like... Uh, it looks like we're going back to some uh, intensely dark shit, so yeah. Anyways, I'm looking forward to that. So with all that being said and more Jujutsu Kaisen next week, I honestly cannot wait for future episodes.